Okay, and welcome back students taking Math for Business and Finance and Math Applications, and we're doing the theory videos for Chapter 16, How to Read, Analyze, and Interpret Financial Reports. And this is the third video. And before I move on, let me just revisit this slide on you know, why financial statements, um, and they are the report card of the, uh, for a company. Just as a brief overview, you know, we have a CEO, we have our business managers over here, we have our sales and marketing over here, and we have our uh, accountants and uh, finance people down here. And remember that the business managers and the sales and marketing people really don't have to uh, talk to each other. As long as sales makes the sale and they push the product over to the business managers and operations to produce the product, that's the end of their communication. You know, the business managers, all they are is this, you know, the only communication they have with sales and marketing is this, where are, you know, are my sales so that I can, you know, run my operations. And of course, you know, you know, everybody has to speak with um, the CEO or the owner of the business, okay? Um, but it's up to the accountant to, everything that happens in a business gets quantified into a number and those numbers end up on your financial statements and the account analyzes those statements right in order to be able to determine the best course of action and of course in the analysis you know they're going to be talking to the business managers and they're going to be talking to the sales and marketing people and they're going to talk to the ceos Okay. And that's why the business managers and sales marketing have to learn about financial statements. Because if they don't understand, you know, those statements, how are they going to be able to defend their position when the account is sitting there going, look at I'm doing the analysis and you have no clue what's going on, you're not going to have a job for too long. Okay. So that's kind of like the gist of that in a two minute video instead of a 18 minute video that kind of got real sloppy in the last set. I mean, I was, I looked at it and went, wow, there's a lot of scribbling going on on that slide. So all right, with that, um, that's just an overview. Right? And so now we're going to actually start looking at format. Now, um, you know, and this is the quote unquote, how to read, right? And you'll see from the uh, title of this here slide is, you know, I have format is important. You know, the balance sheet is as of a particular date, right? Now, this is from your book, all right? Um, but realize that, uh, let me get a highlighter here. Realize that when it comes to a financial statement, you're not going to see, and once they're produced, you're not going to see that. You're not going to see these notes, okay? And you're also not going to see these uh, ABCs down the side, okay? Um, you know, these are just references in your textbook um, in order to, for you to be able to follow along as to what's being presented on the, the balance sheet and the income statement, okay? So when, if you can imagine not seeing what I've highlighted in yellow, right, this is what your balance sheet looks like. Okay. And notice that um, what we have is, is we have what's called an accounting equation where our assets equal our liabilities plus our equity, our owner's equity. Okay. And this is an inviolate rule. Okay. Your assets must equal your liabilities plus owner's equity. And so um, assets are things that we own, okay? Liabilities are things that we owe. I mean, okay, assets we own. I mean, we own a building, we own land, okay? Liabilities are things that we owe, you know, like our accounts payable, a salaries you know, payable, a loan payable. You know, we owe that to other people, other entities. And then equity is the net worth of the business or the investment in the business. Meaning if I take my assets, you know, like when a business dissolves, you know, they close a business, they take all of their assets and they sell off their assets. They liquidate them. They turn them into cash and they use that cash to pay off any of the liabilities and any money left over then goes to, you know, equity and equity being in the form of an owner or shareholders, you know, like common stockholders or preferred stockholders. You know, if there's no money left over, 
um, after paying off the liabilities, you know, that means the company is upside down. You know, they, they can't pay off their debt. And that's the reason why, you know, a likely reason why that they're closing. Okay. But that's the financial, uh, you know, that's the accounting equation. And on the balance sheet, it's presented that way. Notice that over here we have assets and over here we have liabilities and equity. Okay. And the total of the liability and equity is over here, which equals this. So, you know, you look at this, if you divide it right down the middle there, okay, you have assets over here, and this is equal to the liabilities and the stockholders' equity over here, okay? So that's kind of like the format of the uh, the balance sheet. Now, um, let me erase all of this. Now, realize that, you know, they put the... Uh, in the book, they show the assets, the liabilities, and, and I'm sorry, the liabilities and stockholders' equity, you know, one next to each other. Realize that it can be done in the format of assets here, and then you have a total here, and then you have your liabilities and your equity here, okay, and then you have a total here. So it can be vertical, okay. It doesn't have to be horizontal like it, it's being presented on this uh, this figure, all right. Um, and you'll see uh, an example of vertical when we actually look at a compare or when we're doing comparative analysis. Now, when it comes to um, the financial statement, all right, the heading is important. You have the name, you have the name of the statement, and then you have a date. Now, here's the thing: with the balance sheet, it's as of a particular date. And in this case here, we're showing what December 31st of 2014. Okay. On the balance sheet, it report it shows the financial position of the company since its uh, inception and in time, since it, it first had gotten started. And it's easiest to understand that from the perspective of cash. Okay? You know, here they, they're showing a cash balance of seven thousand dollars. Well, if you did a if you have a bank statement, you know, you have your bank account, and you have a bank statement, and you reconcile it. Okay. Well, that account, let's say this company has been in business for five years. Okay. Well, this $7,000 is what is in the account after being in business for seven years, um, five years. Okay. Um, and so that's why as of a specific date, if we change that date, let's say that this was dated, you know, September, all right, in 2014. Well, that cash amount is going to be different. So whatever date that you're using on a financial statement, it's going to change the figures on your balance sheet. Right? So the date is important, and it's as of a specific date. You know, in using um, a computer, it's very easy. You know, you're inputting your data, and it's it's you know put into a database, and then it's up to you to just input the date. And the software runs through and says, okay, everything from, let's say, this business start at 1-1-2010, uh, okay? And now it's December 31st, 2014. Well, it runs and it looks through all the transactions that happen between those dates and presents that information, okay? If we went and we said, okay, um, instead of December 31st, 2014, if we went and said, oh, um, I want June 30th, 2014, okay, all of these numbers would be different, okay? And to even put a finer point on it, I could have said that the date is December 30th, okay? Now, here we were looking at December 31st, okay? And on December 31st, our cash balance was 7,000. But if I made the date December 30th, well, maybe my cash balance might have only been uh, $6,762. Okay? So the date plays an important part in what you're looking at. Okay? Um, and uh, another thing is, is there's a reason for indentations here. Okay? We always present you know, our, when we're looking at assets, we, we're talking about liquidity. Uh, well, the way we present our accounts, we talk about liquidity, meaning how quickly can you convert things into cash. I see students who just have assets and they just put them in any old order, okay? 
when in reality there is a they get a list and uh, on the list you know they do go in a specific order okay cash is the most liquid because it's already cash and that's why it's you know in the beginning but when you talk about land land is not very liquid I mean you've seen you know you drive alongside the road where you see land for sale and it's been for sale for however long okay um, that's why land is not very liquid you can't turn it into cash very quickly and that's why it's down at the bottom okay so they present things in a liquidity order and you look at it cash is very easy uh, is already cash accounts receivable well you know you're extending credit for 30 days but if you called somebody up and said hey I need the money now they'd have to give it to you so it can be converted over real quick merchandise inventory you know you know that gets converted you know into cash whenever you sell it okay um, prepaid is money that you pay out to somebody else you know for an expense like you know you you lease a uh, you know place in the mall and you have to prepay your rent for a whole year well you know you can call up and have that money returned and then you see things like a building well a building is not and these come under um, plant and equipment property plant and equipment um, land buildings you know I don't know about you but they don't sell a building in one day okay I mean they might agree upon it but the transaction can take months okay and which is a lot longer to convert to cash than it would be say accounts receivable okay so everything is presented in, in a uh, as far from top to bottom in liquidity and we look at things from the perspective of current versus long term okay the property pan property plant and equipment is long term meaning it takes a while to sell the building and sell the land but our current all right is what can be relatively quickly and so you will see and by no means is this a set in stone um, uh, format for a balance sheet okay um, some might not even have current assets um, but if you do have a heading notice that there's indentation okay here's a heading and you have indentation and also notice here that you have two different columns okay everything gets put to the right okay everything goes to the right unless you're doing a mathematical calculation now what we're doing here is we want to see the total current assets okay and since we have four of them we'd have to add them all together so we put them uh, one column to the left and then underline and give our total whatever our total is goes into the next most right hand column so whenever you're doing a mathematical calculation the numbers going you know you go to one column to the left and the, the addition or subtraction of whatever it is that you're doing um, the amount gets placed you know in the more right hand column all right, all right so th that's just a little bit more of an inside um, as to how these are created right and you'll get more into this in, like I said in financial accounting but for right now I want you to realize that you know when you're looking at you know you're looking at more than one columns underlines and double underlines are important you have an underline wherever you have a mathemat mathematical calculation and you have a double underline whenever the calculation ends I mean if we're looking over here at liabilities you see we have a, a mathematical calculation here right so we're going one column to the left and our answer goes to the right okay then we have our mortgage and we have an underline and notice this is a total liability well this underline means we're going to add up these two numbers and this is our total but if you notice that there is no double underline underneath this 150,000 that's because it's part of another calculation adding this number and our total equity gives us our total liability and an owner's equity right so you know the, this underline tells me yeah I have a mathematical calculation but I don't see a double underline underneath the 150,000 that tells me that it's part of another mathematical calculation and then I see the underline saying okay in this column what am I adding up I'm adding the 150 and the the, uh, the 5,000 okay and so that gives me a total of uh, that's 55,000 not 5,000 that gives me a total of 205,000 and there's where I see my double underline telling me that that mathematical calculation is finished okay. 
Same with equity over here. Those numbers are being added up. There's the underline, and there's the, the answer, one column to the right. Okay. So, um, you know, and also, too, these are professional papers. Okay. So um, you have to pay attention to capitalization. You have to pay attention to spelling. You have to pay attention to indentations. You have to pay attention to bold. Okay. You have to pay attention to the underlines and double underlines. Okay. And again, you know, here the the way it's the information is presented. It's presented horizontally, but on a balance sheet, it could be presented um, vertically. Okay. So that's generally what a balance sheet looks like. Okay. Um, kind of like burn it in your mind because it provides a skeleton um, for what they all look like, but by no means is it exact. I mean, it's not meant to be, um, you know, copied and mimicked exactly, all right? They follow what's called generally accepted accounting principles, okay? A car dealership on one side of the street and a car dealership on the other side of the street, even though they're both car dealerships, they can have financial statements that look similar but be different, even though they're selling the same things, cars, okay? So when you're looking at this, realize that you have a heading, the date has to be right, you know, this heading has to be right, and how the information is presented has to be right, okay? Um, and so with that, um, if you have any questions, you know, rewind, watch the video again. And, um, you know, if you still don't understand, you know, feel free to contact an instructor. I mean, that's what we're here for. And as I said, this is getting to be a little bit more complicated, but um, we will have homework problems and you'll be able to go over it and you're going to have to create financial statements. So um, you'll get a little bit of a practice and hopefully a little bit of a better understanding. Okay, so that was just the balance sheet. And in the next video, we'll cover the uh, income statement. All right, so I'll see you then.